Um, before we get started, what what is it? What would you in each of you like to get from this session? What is it that? What can I help with? What can um, what can we do in this game? What what do you want from the game tonight? What would you enjoy? Um, to learn more about the the world and how um, our characters navigate it, and how we might be able to adapt this system to a therapeutic game. Okay. Um, to help and empower people who might be experimenting with very powerful or maybe even sometimes stereotypical personalities that they're almost like putting on and maybe isn't who they are 24 seven, but the concept and parts of it intrigue them and they wanna feel empowered by it because normal fantasy settings may or may not give them that power. I get that. <laughs> I get that a lot. Yeah, Michael or Heather? I agree with Sasha. Okay. So are there any questions that I can answer? Uh, any questions I can answer before we get started? Uh, there any, was there anything that you ran into going, you know, how do, how do I do this? What does this mean? Uh, how does the system work? So I was looking at the flaws mm -hmm. and um, so that, so the one thing I was a little confused by when it said inappropriate, is it specifically animalistic that, oh, okay. yeah, that that I was a little. I'm like, okay, how does one inter how, how do I interpret that? Like, you know, because there's many many animals, mm -hmm. <laughs> so and I'm like, I, I do have powers of getting you know claws and all that other stuff. I'm like, okay, cool, but what do they mean exactly by you know that? So uh, it really depends on the animal that you choose and how you want to play it. Um, the character that that particular character was inspired by a un unfortunately now deceased uh, sweetheart of mine who went by the name of Coyote, and mm -hmm. that let's just say that that she she uh, she lived that that name a lot in terms of her mannerisms, in terms of the way that she viewed and interacted with the world. The person who who played that character in the last session. Uh, was gravitated toward crow and so she incorporated a lot of like bird-like mannerisms and so forth if you wanted to be more bear you know would be kind of a you know and go and scratch my back up against this thing or if it was wolf it would be more you know uh, howling with victory or howling with anger it would really depend on the animal that you wanted to play and how you wanted to play it huh. and the the inappropriate element would just be most most folks kind of look at somebody with with animal like you know with, with animal like uh, uh, mannerisms or so forth and go, okay then. <laughs> uh, you're are you all familiar with how the system works? Uh, the 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 very basics of the storyteller system. No, uh, outside of changeling, I'm trying to think if we touched on darkness with any of the other games. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so each of the dots uh, on the character sheet represents one die, one 10 sided die. Uh, you, when you're doing something, in most cases, if you're doing a task, you're going to be adding like a trait, you know, like, like a, an, an, an attribute to an ability and then adding those together. Like for instance, you have to strength three would be three dice plus um, athletics, three dice would be a total of six dice, six, 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 uh, 10 sided dice. Right? Uh, and in, uh, uh, in the case of casting magic, you use your erite, which is this trait right here. And all of you, I believe have, have an erite of three. So you'd just be rolling three dice. Uh, when you're when you're casting magic, whatever uh, what, whatever uh, uh, method you use, uh, which is the focus, uh, which is uh, detailed here, uh, your focus is why do you believe magic works? That's your paradigm. 
how do you focus that belief into action, which is your practice? Uh, and then what tool instruments is what tools or activities do you use when doing that? So for instance, if your if, if, your, um, if your belief was, I am in touch with the natural world and I am embodying the goddess, then your belief would be, I am in touch with the, I, I am in touch with the goddess and I'm channeling her powers through the natural world. Your practice in that case would be God bonding and witchcraft. And what you would do possibly would be, uh, I pick up a handful of dirt, uh, invoke uh, invoke the goddess and say through this dust I uh, through this du du through this dust I curse you, and that would uh, I would be say uh, using casting that spell to do whatever it was you were trying to do. Uh, it, it's one of, again one of the keys with with mage is improvisational magic. The the magic is an extension of the mage rather than uh, a, a, an extension of the individual mage, rather than all spells work this way, like say in D&D, where all druids cast it the same way or all, you know, all wizards or sorcerers cast it the same way. Magic is an extension of the individual, which from a therapeutic standpoint uh, for Mike, uh, the th uh, actually, no, I think it was Sasha, you said that uh, you were looking for the therapy, whichever, <laughs> from a therapeutic standpoint, Mage is a very good game for getting, uh, for getting a player to express themselves and the empowerment of themselves. Empowerment is one of the cores of Mage because, and it's uh, as, as it says in the, the, the introduction to Mage 20th, you are not powerless in this game. Uh, where, mo where many of the games in the world of darkness are all about uh, being uh, struggling with the forces that keep you down, Mage is about elevating yourself and elevating the world around you. And the conflicts within mage come from different mages and different factions having different ideas about what that looks like. Uh, you know, say like the technocracy is all about enlightenment through control. If we do this thing, and if we control these random elements, and if we convince the world, if we, if we convince all people that the world works this way, then we can cut out the random elements and the world will be safer and better for everyone. Uh, if you're an ecstatic, for instance, uh, you believe that uh, empowerment comes from opening yourself to possibilities and embracing the uh, embracing and, and then transcending the threshold of your limitations by going further than you believed was possible. And uh, again, all of all of that is uh, uh, depends a lot on uh, on your uh, on your paradigm and on your practices. Uh, and the so the, the core of mage in, in that uh, in that respect, or I should say the uh, the therapeutic application of mage in that respect is that it gets it encourages you to look at the way that you want to change the world and then to change the world in that way. Uh, any other questions? Anything else I can anything else I can help with? Okay, so. The background for the scenario tonight is that all of you are at a festival called Catastrophe. Uh, Catastrophe is held out in, uh, in various different places that you, the location changes from year to year. In this particular year, uh, you're in the... <laughs> uh, this, this particular year, it's being held out in the, in the deserts in um, uh, central Nevada. Uh, which means that for miles and miles and miles, there is nothing except the festival and dust, dirt, uh, and the mountains on either side. You can look, you know, in uh, look in each direction for miles and miles and miles, and all you see is just emptiness, except for the festival itself and perhaps the clouds of dust, which you find yourselves as we begin. Uh, one of the other elements of the festival is that is constant 24-7 pounding music, uh, whether, that's the, um, whether that's the music beat, you know, beaten on drums uh, for, you know, organically, or whether that's electronic music, which surges and pulses through the speakers uh, of the various different camps around exactly. Yep. <laughs> has, has anyone here actually been to Burning Man? Okay, so I, I'll, I'll, I'll get to, I'll, I'll get to you know, share some of my, my Burning Man memories with y'all. <laughs> uh, 
but uh, but yes, and one of the things about catastrophe that people, anyone who's been to catastrophe can can attest is that you're going to, you're, you're going, the, the experience is going to change you. The people who have gone to catastrophe year after year find themselves transformed in new and different ways. And sometimes those transformations are great and wonderful and they like meet the love of their life or they break through some sort of, of uh, mental block that they've had. And in other cases, they find themselves confronting um they, they find themselves confront, confronting aspects of themselves that they hadn't really wanted to see until that moment. In this particular case, all five of you have been enjoying the festival and you've been jamming out and partying and meeting people. And then things change. Mm -hmm. It was a great party, you know, until it ended. Then you woke up. Okay, you would sense that there was something strange and uh, distracting, disconcerting before everything, you know, be before the uh, before the party. It's kind of the proverbial disturbance in the force before that moment. Now you've always kind of come to expect that by now maybe you've been to maybe you've been to catastrophe before maybe this is your first time but in any case you kind of sense there was something strange about this evening and then you find yourselves in sort of a a, uh, a cloud a cloud of dust and in all directions it's night in all directions, all you can see is the, the, the vague flash of the lights far, far, much further away than you, uh, than you, were, than you were standing mere moments ago. Is that better? The air is thick and chilly, colder than it was when you uh, just a few moments ago, wherever it was you were doing the, the sweat, maybe if you were dancing, the sweat is starting to, to dry and cool against your skin. If you were sleeping, you're no longer in your tent. If you were talking to someone, they're gone. You find yourselves standing in this dusty, sort of almost nether world you can sense the you can you can sense the festival and the pulse and the pound of the music you can see the lights flashing through the through the uh, through the mist through the smoke in the distance but sound here is muffled and chilly and you're standing with four people you've never seen before at least never talked to before perhaps you've you've past each other, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, but you've never spoken until this moment. So looking around at the four of you, who do you see? Please describe yourselves. What do you look like? What do the other people here see when they see you? see a woman, but not just any woman, a woman that reminds you of all the women that you have met, whether it be your mother, your sister, your grandmother, your lover, your friend. She, her hair seems to pour past her shoulders and down her back and all the way down. It is the color of a, the rich 
earth under your feet. Her eyes are like the glowing soft moon in the sky. Her skin is supple and warm. And, and when you look at it, it fe you feel as if you are embraced in the most calming hug that you have ever felt. You feel that you are at peace in the world right now. Even though you are not sure of what is going on, that is okay. This moment is a moment. What was, 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 and we can look forward to the future. And she just looks around and she just sort of nods and kind of gives you a soft smile and a nod. Hello, everyone. Greetings. Thank you. So if <clears throat> when you look at my character, you would see kind of an athletic medium build male with a, kind of a crew cut and you don't notice anything over, but you get the sense that there may, uh, I guess the kind of term I'd use is enhancements. You know, there's nothing like uh, obvious, but you can tell they're different in some way. There've been modifications made, um, so piercings, those other things that are kind of more obvious, but you get a sense that there may be some, some changes that they have undergone to change how they perceive and interact with the world. Um, to that effect, they're also carrying kind of a, laptop that looks a little different and they have not really sunglasses but that's the best closest term that I could use and you almost get the sense that they're paying attention but they're almost engaging in a reality over a reality so they're looking at you but you don't know if they're really looking at you <laughs> cool and so Michael or Heather um, my character is a tall female um, You'll notice she has dark purple roots that fade out into a light lavender, um, very long hair down to her waist. Um, you notice that she has tribal and but more celestial tattoos around her body, most notably one that goes down her cheek um, in a white color Neat. that almost seems to glow. Um, yeah. Cool, thank you. And lastly, uh, you are all drawn to the gaze of the last character who is standing um, in a long, red leather trench coat but doesn't seem to be wearing a shirt under it and you see a lot of uh tattoos across his chest and weaving down and around when different necklaces and jewelry very clearly trying to stand out <laughs> in a crowd um jet black hair even though he's light skin colored uh not small by any means but skinny tall wearing uh again leather but black leather pants with long uh, combat boots as his shoes. Um, a silver chain around uh, his pocket and um, other, you know, bits of jewelry um, instead of a watch wearing a uh, spiked bracelet earrings, that kind of stuff. Cool, thank you. 
existence as you're as you're all sort of look, getting getting the impression of who the hell are these people and and what are who the hell are these people and where the hell are we and what the hell just happened here uh you sense more than hear a voice that reverberates into you through your skin into your bones uh up through your feet kind of almost in it almost kind of being picked up by the by the hair on the back of your uh, the backs of your arms and the hair in your heads oh well so this is who i have to work with tonight all these brave souls with their hearts in the right place i i assume but their eyes just looking for somewhere something else well Let's see what you can do. What you can do, perhaps for me. I'm catastrophe, of course. Not the catastrophe that you know, but the catastrophe everyone feels, even if you don't see me. I sense that there is something different about the five of you and well i'm rather hoping that you can help me if you do i can assure you i can help you i have favors i may bestow on you if uh, if you can do a favor for me what do you think what would you like this evening in exchange for it is assuming that you will help me. Is it desire? Is it dance? Could I give you visions? Help you sleep? Help you stay awake? Make you stronger? Make you richer, at least for now. Might I help you dance? Might I help you feed? Might I give you the greatest memories of this, of this coming night? Or perhaps wipe them all away? Name your price and I'll name mine. So, go ahead. I just said about something. Okay. Um, so my character is kind of talking almost indecipherably, and you kind of get a sense like he's having a conversation with somebody else. And um, he's just kind of like, no, no, that won't work. No, that's not <laughs> fault in the code. Uh, oh, and then he kind of suddenly kind of jolts out of it as if he starts to pay attention to the actual situation in front of him. And it's just like, whoa. Normally, my, when I forget to take my medication, my anxiety doesn't kind of literally pull me out of reality. Uh, who are you? Catastrophe? Well, yes, of course. Who else would I be? That's a good question. Who else would you be? And where are we? Oh, well, you're, you're still here. I, I've, I've, I've taken the liberty of taking you somewhere, somewhere where we could talk. Where I could speak with you a bit more privately than perhaps you would be. Uh, we would be speaking if you were where you were a few moments ago. You, you definitely get the sense that there's a. Uh, you definitely get the. You definitely get a sense of arrogance and and mischief and definite sense of superiority here but then what few and what what uh, experiences you've had with spirits this definitely seems uh to be expected but uh, you know also that you should be very very careful what you ask for and what is the catastrophe asks of, of us i have a problem tonight it's been building up for quite some time and I've been trying to be reasonable with them about it but you see this is my home wherever it is that I happen to be and there's someone and you get you get a sense you, you don't actually see catastrophe but you get a sense of being directed back toward the 
the light and the sound. And through the mists, you gradually see a shape rising up from the uh, uh, from one particular part of the uh, the hexa the, the hexagram, which is what the uh, kind of the city camp of catastrophe is called, sort of being rising up in the mist, almost like an octopus or squid of some sort, whipping out tendrils and wrapping this light energy back into itself. Some people tonight seem to wish to take more than is welcome. I'd just like you to convince them very nicely, if necessary, if possible, to stop because this is my land and my home and my people are under my protection and they assume too much and take more than I'm willing to give them. They don't sound like good guests at Catastrophe. Oh, they're really not. They're very perceptive. Well, I'm all for helping people, but speaking about being perceptive, it sounds like your rewards tend to be temporary. Well, I can't say that I have a lot of control outside of my domain. This is, my rewards are mine to bestow in my heart. The rest of the world, I don't have much use of it. But what you bring forth from tonight will stay with you if you wish it to. I mean, I can't grant temporal riches. I, I couldn't make you rich. I, I couldn't make you wealthy beyond tonight. But I could make your experiences here worthwhile for as long as you stay. Would helping you help me become more knowledgeable, more skillful? Oh, quite possibly. It depends on what you wish to be knowledgeable and skillful about. Fixing things, fixing the world, adapting it to my needs. Oh, I'm all about that. I'm sure I can help you. And what, what do you guys you, think? Uh, just sort of kind of is, she has closed her eyes and she's sort <laughs> of sitting and you can see that she's listening. Specifically to Catastrophe's cadences and how they are saying the things. Mm -hmm. We are guests in your home, Catastrophe, and you wish to bestow us a gift that is riches beyond any. You are truly not only a humble, but a wonderful um, trying to think what's the word for somebody who's the the person who's running like the party host yes host my only ask is how can we make this land enjoy the, the bountiful pleasure that we are currently enjoying. How can we attune and have the very ground that we are on be filled with the rhythm of the music that will spring forth life from the sands and dunes. You are perceptive, quite perceptive. I am joy. That's why, I, that's, that's why people come here. That's why people come to me. They come to, to, to leave that, that cynical, decaying filth outside. I just want to help people. I just want, I want to heal. I want to transform people's 
tired and painful lives into something wondrous and magical. That's what I ask. That's what I, that's what I bring. And sometimes the, the transformations involved are painful, but it's joy. It's joy in the end. It's joy that comes of it. I'm certain. You, and, and, and in fact, the, in the, the way that she phrases I'm certain makes, makes you realize that she's really not certain. She's obviously knows a bit more than she's saying here, but. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a way for us, because my character is specifically listening to the cadence of mm -hmm. her and is there a way to decipher whether or not there is, well, of course there's more to what she's saying, but more that her joy, mm -hmm. whether or not it is something that we all would, would could agree on is joy and not something that is inherently like, yes, it's joy and she wants to bring joy, but is her, her view of joy something that we living as mages and in this world might inherently see as painful? Okay, that's a that's an excellent question. So, what is your and let's we'll bring some bring some system in here. Um, is your perception plus um, let's see either enigma either enigmas or or empathy, whichever is higher. Okay, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, first, my perception. Um... Perception is three. Okay. And what's the other thing? Enigmas? Either either enigmas or empathy, whichever is higher. Okay. Uh, trying to find where those would be. Under oh, uh, the ta uh, empathy is under talents and um, enigmas is under knowledges. Let me uh, pull up your, you're the witch, correct? Yeah, they're the same. They're two. Okay. So yes, please. Um, Roll, roll five dice um, and anything that is a, anything that's a seven or higher counts as a, as a success. Okay. So it would be five, uh, five D10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, five, five D10 and you want to roll seven or better. Okay. Uh, I got two eights. Excellent. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, you can you can tell through uh, through through analyzing her voice, you can tell that it's not actively malign. Um, this this is not your your it doesn't sound like you're dealing with a trickster spirit whose idea of joy is you know watching somebody fall down the stairs and hurt themselves because that's funny. Mm -hmm. um, you you get the impression one that she is sincere. Uh, that more than anything else, she's trying to understand what mortals find joyful because it confuses her. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the problems for most immortals. Uh, yeah. So. Pretty much, yeah. That's, okay. oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay, so, uh, so wait, what else can I, uh, I, I guess, get, uh, understand from her cadence and wanting that these un- uh, hospitable guests mm -hmm. who are causing basically a problem, kind of killing killing the mood <laughs> uh, of, of of this party. Mm -hmm. So, and she has already tried to get rid of them, and they have not. Is that basically? Basically, the the sense that you get is she's tried to be nice, mm -hmm. and she's trying to be subtle, and and nice and subtle are not working. Um, they're clearly not, and, and you would you would know this much from your experience with catastrophe, uh, the the festival so far. If they were actively being assholes, if there were somebody that was like grabbing people and stuff like that, then there there's a group mm -hmm. called the Holy Fools who would kick them out. Okay, so they are doing something that is not overt 
that is upsetting her, but mm -hmm. has not but has not been noticed by the Holy Fools or any of the others. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, one of the things one of the things that you catch as the undercurrent of from catastrophe the, as the undercurrent from catastrophe's voice is that mortals confuse the shit out of her. That you you realize that from you know the way she's saying you know what is it that you like what would you what can I do and, and that that whole idea of what can I do seems to be run as subtext running through everything you've heard from her so far and she's realizing that what is happening over there is not comfortable for her but she's not sure if it's comfortable for them if if what it was again was you know if it was a uh, a camp full of, of people who were, you know, groping, you know, groping folks or, or ripping folks off. Obviously, she'd know to get those people out. But what's going on here is disturbing her and confusing her. And she's not quite sure what to do about it. She thinks you might be. Okay. So, so that you. Mm -hmm. So my so my character is going to have sort of closed her eyes and sort of seems to just plant her feet kind of deeper in the sand. And she opens it. Do we? Does, does she have a form? Does like what does, or is it just a voice? Okay. Uh, let's see. What I would like to do a I would like to do a physical movement towards the voice, the okay. physical, what have you. Okay. Since you are since you are looking for a form, mm -hmm. and you're you're looking basically what you're you're looking toward. Uh, if, you're, if you're looking toward the festival itself, um, what you see is that the, uh, the, the that swirling mist and the swirling dust and the light seem to weave themselves into a pattern uh, of a woman about medium, say medium height. Uh, she's translucent in the way that you can see through her, but that but she seems to be composed of a uh, kind of ephemeral. Uh, ephemeral matrix of light, and I mean that matrix in the uh, in the technological sense uh, uh, of of light. She's uh, long hair that shifts from flowing hair to dreadlocks to shorter chopped hair to a kind of a bristling mohawk. To her, her hair flows and changes. She, she's wearing belly dance garb no she's wearing like road warrior leathers no she's wearing nothing no she's wearing body paint no she's wearing kind of jeans and and a strange t-shirt no she's wearing this elaborate costume that looks sort of like a a, a jellyfish composed of, of of threads and that image is constantly changing shifting through uh, shifting through costumes, shifting through ethnicities, but it's all consistently a woman. Mm -hmm. And it's all consistently, she's consistently looking at you and dancing. And again, that dance is sort of, it, it flows and then it chops and then it stomps and then it stops and looks at you and, you, and says, oh, you can see me, can't you? I smile brightly and my eyes Water begins to sort of trail down as emotion fills me, and I do not block that joy. And I kind of reach just a gentle hand as if I were to pop her cheek. And if I may call you sister, you do not need to give me anything, for you have given me everything I need. You have done so much. Yeah, we're, we're kind of, I'm kind sorry. of low. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yeah, sorry. If I may call you sister, oh. you have done, you do not need to give me anything. You have given me everything I need, and you still are trying to understand all of us here. And I can see how heavy that weight must be. And I wish to lighten your step, my dear sister, so your dance can continue and lighten us all. 
please allow me to give you that and to allow you to continue to bring joy to all of us here. Oh, you're good. <laughs> she she close she closes her eyes and you see these these trails of shimmering tears and she smiles and she reaches and touches your hand and when the the the, the skin that you feel or the, the light <laughs> that you feel under your hand kind of feels a crackling uh, like uh, like static electricity and she brushes against your hand and you just if you feel this intense flow of energy uh, flowing into you and she whispers thank you uh, give yourself 10 quintessence oh shit. Uh, okay uh, <laughs> you might have it, it, you might have hit a theme for me when it comes to wanting <laughs> to help people so that's why i might be getting into that okay <laughs> cool. so where's the quintessence uh quintessence the okay, quintessence is this this wheel over here okay. essentially yeah just like take a pencil or something like that or and fill it you you now have 10 more quintessence what you feel is this amazing rush of of, of euphoria uh so so much so that it staggers you it's it's kind of like it's it's like i'd say it's like a wave of orgasm but it's not that kind of erotic um it's bliss Okay. Uh, it's it's you again. It's it's, it's a, a, a euphoria so strong that your knees buckle. So two things. One, my character is going to sort of softly buckle under it and just kind of lift her her head back and her eyes more just water and wetness from just her or like her face. She is unrestrained in her emotion. And kind of she has this, she kind of cups her her breasts and kind of clutches, but in this smile, in this just deep, like she's just kind of laughing in this happy, like over the moon type of sense. And she's looking at you all in her eyes the pupils have just dilated and smile and, and I and she's just kind of looking at you all in the most like this is the feeling of unrestrained joy. Now on a so does it matter which way I go with the quintessence on the wheel? Oh you just uh, go uh, the, the, where the areas are filled in, just go the uh, cl uh, the cl yeah clockwise. Clockwise, okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And so what the what the rest of you feel watching this is this just a, this surge of ecstasy, which especially in in your in your case, uh, Michael, this 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 surge of of an uh, kind of ecstatic pulse. Again, like it's like joy. It's a a uh, surge of life force that is erotic, but not sexual, if that makes sense. Um, and uh, again, you feel the uh, you you feel the hair on your bodies and the hair on your heads bristle and and shimmer. If you're uh, you know the ground where you're standing, and just, just uh, it seems to crackle with a uh, crackle with life force. Uh, in Mike, in your case, you're, if you're looking at one of your devices, uh, the device screens just kind of um, shimmer and then go out for a moment. They go back on. It's not like a, oh shit, it's dead. But it's like, it's almost like there's been a, a, a pulse that shorted them for just a second and then they come back on. Uh, Heather, in your case, what you sense is this amazing wave of healing energy, life energy, uh, kind of on a level that you've never felt before. You've felt this sort of, of uh, you felt this, this sort of energy pass from you into someone else as you've been healing them, but it's never come to you and washed over you from another source like this before. It, it's almost like, like being kissed by goddess. Uh, 
And in Michael, in your case, the incubus here, this is hot, dude. Uh, this, this, this whole thing is, is just like, wow, what, whatever, what, what, whatever they just did. I want more of that, please. Um, please. Yes. And thank you. Can we patent this? Mm -hmm. Can we? Uh, you froze Can up we there. Patent this? <laughs> Can you patent it? <laughs> nope. <laughs> but you're, it's wonderful that you felt it. You want more. And, yeah. And that's, yeah, go ahead. I feel like all of my problems have suddenly been solved. How can I help you with this problem? How can I solve your problem? Thank you. That, and, and now, now that she has a physical form, she's pointing over it where I was mentioning kind of the octopoid spirit entity. He points over at that, which is over at a, uh, uh, which is over at a, a, a camp with kind of blue and green light, which is much more subtle than a lot of the, the, the bright neon-ish garish light around it. It's almost like a, almost like a, like you can see the light, but it's drawing light into it, if that makes sense. Uh, and she says that is need need craves need seizes need draws all things to her and she's taking without asking and that's not something that i can abide and i'm not even sure she knows it problem is is i don't think she or her her creatures care and that's, I won't have that here. I won't have that in my home. I won't, I won't have that in my heart. But I can't drive them out except with violence and I don't want violence here. There has to be another way. Do you know what need wants? What brought them here? As far as I, as, as far as I can see, as far as I can feel, what they want is life. Life itself, they, they're, drawing, they're drawing passion, they're drawing vitality from people. They're bringing people to sleep without dreams. And I am, she is, she is ex extending her arms out to, to a point where she almost seems to stretch across the sky. I am dreams. And need is taking them away. They claim to be a temple of peace. They call to people saying, come here and rest. But the people go and they rest and they sleep, but they don't dream. They just give without being asked, it's being taken. And, and I can't have that, not here. Hearing catastrophe talk, it almost sounds like they're on her corner and she doesn't like it. They're kinda yeah. in on her territory. Kind of, so, yeah. So my character kind of has sort of slowly kind of rose back onto her feet. And I look to um, our healer. They sound as if they are hollow and they are trying to fill a wound. Healer, what, what do you think we could do to, to fill that incredible hunger that they seem to be trying to fill? Um, my character is coming back from her senses of feeling what it must feel like to be healed um, and kind of questions, is this what it's like? Hmm. Oh, to, to be on the receiving end of your arts? Yeah, yeah. Like, is this what it's like to be healed? Mm -hmm. Probably. 
I wonder if they require inspiration. They may. My character nods. And what do we need to empower you to do so? To inspire them and to fill that hole that they seem to be trying to just forge upon others. Since that seems to sound like what they are doing, my sister. Here, please, she says, walk with me. And she starts walking toward the, uh, starts walking toward that space, or toward, starts walking toward that camp, that space where it seems, it seems like the light is swallowed, beginning to swallow up the light. Um, which of you have prime? The, 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 uh, um, the sphere of prime. Actually, I think probably all of you do. Sphere of prime. Let's see which, ecstatic. I have uh, two circles for that. Let's see. Healer and is it reality? I also have two in that. Yep. Okay, so all of, all of you um roll your perception plus enigmas that's uh perception mental uh enigmas knowledges uh with a f anything a five or higher is a success and you said every circle is a d10 mm -hmm. So would I, if my perception is a two and then my enigma is a two, would I just roll four? Yep. Okay. Yeah, correct. Okay. I you got said one nine. So okay. Five or up. I got a seven and a six. Okay, so that's two. I got a five and eight and eight and a ten. <laughs> uh, Reroll your ten. I got three fives and an eight. Okay, so... You, so all of you can sense this as, as you begin as you begin to walk uh, in toward the uh, in toward the space. All of you feel this kind of a, a pulling sensation from that uh, from that sort of that 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 blue green pulsating camp, and all of you start to notice the closer you get to it, the more agitated you begin to feel, the more. Uh, whatever fears or anxieties or insecurities you feel starts to almost start crawling like 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 cockroaches or centipedes up, up out of your bones and up through your skin. It's very uh, yeah. Um, Michael, since you rolled so well, what you can you you notice this? What they're doing in that in in that that camp is is that they are getting. They are drawing life force from people's anxieties and fears and insecurities. Uh, they're kind of bringing that up to the surface um, and, and feeding on it like candy, which is ew. Bad vibes, man. So is their intent, is it like apparent from, I guess Michael, this would probably be a question for him since he's receiving more than we are, but is it inherently malevolent? Um, well, if uh, Catastrophe said that it wasn't malevolent to begin with but it's certainly not good it's pulling out people's fears their anxieties their suffering and feeding off of that so what let's see um michael what do you have what's your um intelligence plus um plus empathy um I think it's fairly high. Intelligence and, and empathy is a looks like four. Okay. Yep. Four. So, and um, as as a GM note, I'm actually 
asking for more die rolls than I would normally because I'm trying to incorporate the uh, incorporate the system in here as well. Uh, a lot of times with a with with a more established group, if you know if we were playing like a campaign, I would just be putting all of this down to role playing. Uh, but because we're doing, you know, because the purpose of the workshop is to familiarize you with the system as well. And because we're just sort of here for the night, I'm, I'm asking for more roles than I would normally. Uh, I personally, as a GM, favor using the dice as little as possible and as, and as much role and incorporating as much role playing as possible. Uh, but for this particular, uh, for this particular thing, um, yeah, Michael, please roll four uh, four dice and don't roll a one or a two. <laughs> Basically, don't botch. <laughs> I got a nine, a three, and two twos. <laughs> okay, you got you got the nine and the three. So you, you as far as as far as you can sense, because this is kind of your as, as you're an ecstatic and, and the, that your you know incubus guy here, as far as you can tell, this isn't intentionally corrupt. Um, but they're definite it's parasitic. Uh, it's parasitic in a really kind of icky, non-consensual sort of way. And you're you're not getting yeah, you're not getting, you know, come here vibes, but what you're getting is um, bad touch vibes. Something feels sick here. Um, shivering. Um, as if It hurts my soul to be here. Oh, good. You're good. <laughs> it sounds yeah. like it's poisoning the mind. Mm hmm Poisoning or possibly drawing out the poisons, uh, drawing drawing up the poisons of the mind. That's kind of how it feels for you. It's it's as you as you as you step closer, as you walk closer, uh, kind of following uh, following catastrophe. Who's Walk is sort of a dance, sort of a, 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 a flowing, spinning dance. Um, what you're getting is it's not like it's it's not instilling your insecurities. It's like, you know how sometimes if you're at a party and you feel out of place and you're like, oh, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have a good time here, but are, are people looking at me? Do I look weird? Is there something in my teeth? You get that? It's that kind of feeling amplified. And the closer you get to it, the more it's the more it's being the, the, the more it's being drawn up out of you to the surface. And as you uh, as you get in for a while, you you walk for a while. The uh, uh, the mist thins. The closer you get, the more you can see the lights and feel the pump, the pound of the music of the rest of the festival, uh, which I'm going to ease that out here and ease this up here. I'm so sorry. I need to be right back. Um, okay. Major thing just happened. Okay. Kids come first. <laughs> uh, so I guess bio break and we will take this as a... Uh, Take this as a uh, take this as a transition there, almost like a temple, uh, like a temple made of pillars and tents uh, uh, arched out across them. There's some waving. As you get closer, you see that those sort of waving arms are like banners, like flags, but they're white, uh, kind of a white silk. Seem to be blowing in different directions, which is not the way the wind works. But um, from a mortal perspective, it would look as if, as if there were fans blowing them in, in different directions, but you can tell there are no fans here. In fact, the air surrounding this particular camp has an almost dampened feel to it. 
uh, dampened both as in a kind of physical dampness sensation and dampened as in your physical sensations muting and your energetic uh, since and your energetic perceptions of growing numb. So what do you do as you approach? Is there anything that you're uh, anything you're doing to prepare a particular gadget, a particular spell, a, to, to armor yourselves maybe against this, to kind of a, make some sort of mental shields or energetic shields against what you, what you feel is, is this kind of parasitic draw on your fears and insecurities. Um, my character is just trying to take it all in and just kind of looking and assessing and trying to find the, the sort of the, the fault in the system, so to speak. Okay. My, Anyone? My okay. character is um, in a very um, conscious uh, but meditative state, trying to clear her mind um, so that she can be better prepared and not um, drawn into the anxieties and the negative energy. Okay, cool. So my character um, equally is trying to sort of shift her mindset uh, since right now she feels very invaded. She feels that her space has absolutely been uh, invaded. So mm -hmm. she is she is sort of trying to move her space, her, her mindset from sort of a small to a big kind of hat, elongating her stance and being like, no, this is, we, this is not a time to shrink back. This is a time to present yourself in the face of something that is trying to dominate your space. Because the only way to not have a fight and not to submit to this is to push back and give at least the front of, this is my space. That might be your space there. <laughs> this, this box, yeah. <laughs> You don't, you're not getting in this box, at least. <laughs> so. Cool. The, the, what the rest the rest of you notice that uh, the rest of you notice that that the, uh, uh, the 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 witch has assumed a distinctly cat like uh, not only cat like pose but kind of starting to look cat like, uh, and that's both cool and rather disconcerting. <laughs> and uh, Michael, what are uh, what is the ecstatic doing? As he's walking closer and feeling this more and more, he feels his flaws starting to come into him. These nightmares, uh, these flashbacks starting to come in and his bright red leather cloak is almost before everyone's eyes changing to a dark almost muddy green color um, and his vibrant chains and pants are becoming more neutral colored. He reaches into um, his pocket and is, you know, fumbling with something in very uncharacteristic fashion. 
and turns out it's a pill bottle. Mm. Thumps a few <laughs> out, takes a few, washes it down, takes a few deep breaths, and was like, all right, let's keep going. <laughs> Ooh, oh my. Pop the couple Xanax and he's <laughs> got So as you reach the uh, as as you reach the borders of the hexagram, uh, catastrophe, as I said, was kind of is sort of walking, flowing, dancing, and then it's just her form starts to dissipate more, and she becomes thinner and fainter, and she looks at back at you, Sasha, with a, an expression of alarm as she dissipates into the last of the mist as you step through the last of that misty area and into the the light of the uh, of the camp itself the camp that says over the top as you walk around to the front of it uh temple of tranquility temple of tranquility pulsates with as i was mentioning earlier with a, a green with green and blue lights there's a different sort of mist in this place, almost a... Uh... You ever walked into a, uh, a walk-in you know, walk freezer and the way that your, uh, that the way that your body kind of gives off that uh, uh, condensation in the cold? That's sort of what you're walking into here. It's not cold. It actually feels oddly comforting and numbing as you step in and what you see beyond the, uh, the entrance to the Temple of Tranquility, there are several people who are standing, uh, that are standing by each other and I'll, I'll mention them in a second, but the main thing you see is just lots of people uh, and most of them are curled up on pillows and on blankets. Uh, and carpets, the floor, well, the, what passes for a floor here, the ground is, is covered in, uh, is, is covered in thick plush rugs, like, um, you know, the, we call oriental rugs. I'm not sure what the, the right term for them is these days, but, uh, but those kind of really thick plush rugs, there are tapestries uh, with sort of a, of new age uh, new age um, Hindu iconography uh, around there are Buddha statues of various different types of Buddhas uh, most of them leaning toward the Chinese end of the spectrum but there are a few that look Tibetan and for anybody who's seen pictures of Tibetan Buddha uh, Buddhas those are not necessarily nice Buddhas uh, there are candles lit around in the space, but the predominant light here is, is green and blue. And the people who are, the, the people who are, uh, who are laying around, most of them are in, are in you know, puppy piles curled up with each other. Some of them are wrapped around, they're wrapped around each other in comforting ways. A, a handful of them are making out um, and a few of them are sort of curled into fetal positions, um, shaking as if they're having bad dreams. And presiding over this, you see a, you know, the, uh, a short of the voluptuous woman with, with long, curly, uh, dark hair. Uh, she's wearing a, uh, uh, Kind of wear, wearing a, a bright batik skirt and body paint, nothing else. She's got a big smile and and big brown eyes, and she's talking rather uh, uh, animatedly to uh, a tall, kind of almost like road warrior looking dude, uh, big you know leather clad biker guy with these massive muscles, lots of tattoos. Uh, very dusty leathers uh, and a and distinctly unpleasant uh, look to his face. Uh, on the other side uh, of her, kind of listening but not uh, but not part of the conversation between the two of them, is a uh, very slender, very very good looking, kind of youngish 
man with a sort of very pretty androgynous face, uh, a black goatee, short, very short black hair. Uh, he's wearing a um, blanking on the, 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 the name of it, a loincloth essentially. Uh, and very, again, brightly colored uh, loincloth and uh, very lean, good looking build, no tattoos or, or body art that you can see. Uh, and there are a few other people in the shadows you can sense, but unless you look straight at them, you can't really get a, get much of a play on their features. Uh, what you do get from the impression is that this is being set up as a, a chill space, but it's not very chill. And again, that feeling of having your energy drawn from you, it's almost like it's being drawn out through your feet and into the ground. Uh, and the, uh, the, the, the woman with the skirt, the one who is talking to the road warrior uh, looking guy, looks over to you and says, come in, come in. Welcome to the temple of, of tranquility. Please have a seat or stand, whatever you feel most comfortable with. What do you do? Um, I would like to do some, some, uh, what I did similar to uh, catastrophe to sort of study uh, some of the cadence and how they're talking and see not only how, how truthful they are to us, but also in the way that they are presenting this. We already know, we already know it's fake, but my question is how, how do, deeply do they believe in this fakeness? Like, it, like, is this basically their persona and their way of, you know, this is their reality that they believe in, or is this just a front that they are wearing, almost like a cloak? To, and there is something wholly other. Okay. Um, do you have mind? Do you have the, you have the, the mind sphere? Where would I, I see? I uh, that would be under or... spears. Let's see. You are the witch. I have life, prime, focus. I do not have mind. Okay. I have mind. Have... Okay. I have two in mind. Okay. All right. And in your in your case, Sasha, so you're you're using this mundane empathy, such as such as that may be. Um, and um, uh, Michael, if you're going to try and use mind, what are you going to try to do to get a read on them? So I um, entering into this feel that everything is clashing with each other doesn't fit the feng shui is all wrong um and that it's just creating this almost perfect pool of just almost apathy like it's pulling everything out of the people in here and with uh the, the mind uh, that I have, I'd like to see who, if anyone is unaffected by it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, let's quickly go back to go back to Sasha because you're just trying to get a read on her. Uh, please roll your, uh, your perception plus empathy. Okay, I think that was five, so. And in this case, anything seven or higher. Actually, strangely enough, eight or higher. I got two eights. Okay, you got two eights. Um, so the woman who is welcoming you in seems to be absolutely sincere. If she, if if she, if this is a front, she believes it. Okay. Uh, the big road warrior looking dude next to her is pretty much radiating fuck around and find out. Um, and the guy on the other side the uh, the kind of androgynous guy uh androgynous person is got kind of a 
kind of sneaky conniving. You're, you're getting sneaky and conniving out of his body language. And he's not really hiding it very, very well. Um, he's presenting very prettily, but you can see through it. Okay. So, Michael, what? Uh, let's see. You you were you were employing your uh, your drugs as a as an instrument of focus. So we can say that you are uh, you're using mind. Um, so who are you going? To, who are you trying to get a read on here? Um, the uh, I'm assuming that the person who welcomed us in is being. And the biker looking guy is like a bodyguard type person. So yeah. the more androgynous person who almost seems to be intentionally staying out of the limelight, I'd like to get a read on. Okay. So yeah, roll your uh roll your arite. That's the three dice. And Here we go. Just the three, uh, or should I add mine to it? Or oh, that's uh, so when you're uh, when you're when you're casting a magical effect, you roll your arite. Uh, the 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 dots in the dots in your spheres show how much you understand, how much you can manipulate the forces that you're uh, that you're working with, but you don't actually roll those. Oh, okay. So it's yeah, those. Yeah, the the uh, the dots in mage. This is actually a good mechanical point. Uh, in the mage, the spheres have five ranks. The first rank, and that's represented by the five dots. The first rank reflects being able to perceive the phenomenon. The second uh, allows you to manipulate a little bit, uh, do some you know, some minor manipulation with the phenomenon as it exists around there, like manipulating somebody's emotions or or manipulating a candle flame. Uh, with level three, you're able to affect the uh, the phenomenon some more and be able to in, um, use that uh, effect with yourself. Uh, like with life three, you can use it to heal yourself. Uh, at rank four, you're able to, to, to manipulate the phenomena fairly significantly, being able to do things like heal or harm somebody uh, with just with magic alone, to be able to uh, stop time, to be able to um, have, uh, uh, invoke fire or wind or something where it didn't exist before and control it on a fairly, uh, fairly large scale. With five, the powers are almost godlike. At rank five, the powers are almost godlike. And they depend, you know, on, on the particular sphere. Uh, so what you roll is your arite, and you want to be as subtle as possible because subtle magic is easier. Most perceptual perceptual magics are are, are very subtle. If what you wanted to do was go, you know, come here, that would be using mind in what's what's called a vulgar way, in which you would be commanding somebody to do something that they would not normally be inclined to do. That's harder. Uh, and it can backfire on you. What you're just doing is getting a reading on somebody. So that's uh, coincidental. Um, and so it really goes, uh, in this case, against his, uh, his willpower. So roll your three dice, get higher than a five or five or higher. I got uh, a 10 and a five. Oh, okay. Yeah. You like see right through this dude. Um, in fact, literally, you see, you can see his aura. Um, and his aura is kind of, it's very, it's oily. It's very, it's, it's very shifty and he's very, they, no, he slash they are very shifty. Um, uh, and it's kind of, it's, it's, it's hard to get a, a precise reading on it because the colors are roiling and shifting, but it doesn't look, it doesn't look integrated. It doesn't look honest, like at all. Um, what you're getting from what you're getting from this person is uh, they're an opportunist, um, kind of par par a parasitical, tricky opportunist uh, who is just sort of at least at least at this point along for the ride. Uh, you're also getting a kind of a predatory vibe from this person. Uh, I was thinking a snake. 
that's an insult to snakes, but yeah. <laughs> okay, Heather, Mike, what are you doing? I'm wondering, um, one of my um, instruments is energy. Mm -hmm. Could I read the energy of those who are curled up in that fetal position and shaking, comparing those to those that are not? Yep. Oh yeah, that would be easy. Uh, I'm not even going to have you roll for that because for, for you, if, if energy is your primary, if, if energy work is one of your, uh, your primary uh, magical methods, it's really obvious. Um, what, what you can sense here is that these people are being lulled to sleep, that they're having nightmares and that the energy from their nightmares is being drawn into this vortex, which you, if the rest of you can see your, your almost, your, your sight is almost involuntarily drawn up into the center of the temple area. Um, the rest of you probably notice her head going in the center area where the, uh, where, where the, where the, uh, the, the tent, the temple is reaches highest is this vortex of voracious energy that is drawing both from the people who are on the ground and drawing from all of you. It's kind of drawing it down and then drawing it up. And that energy has a very distinctly anxious feel to it as if what the vortex is feeding on is, is insecurity and fear. Nothing as blatant as violence or, or, or as, as violence or terror or pain but shading that way as you get closer and higher up into the vortex. Do you have the spirit sphere? Um, let's see, spirit, uh, spirit is two, yes. Okay, so you do. Um, what are you doing to, to look into what, essentially what you're seeing here is a, is, is a, is a vortex. You can sense there's more to it than that. Do you want to see what that is? Yes. Okay. What do What do you do? How are you going to use your magic that way? Oh boy. Um. Oh. Hmm. I'm not sure. Any ideas, guys? Okay. Um. Uh, what I, is? Okay. <laughs> Did I jump on somebody's? Step yeah, on somebody's toes. Um. I was just gonna say my character is just trying to like use their magic to kind of run like a, a, a program to scan the vortex and try and understand like what makes it work. Cool. Do you have uh, do you have spirit? Uh, spirit. Uh, let's see. No, I don't. Okay. Uh, so I can tell you in a second. I'm just what I what I'm doing, Heather, is I'm trying to find your healer's character. Oh, there we go. It's the first one. Um, so. What you do with that is look at your focus. Okay. So question, what does prime do? Uh, prime works with energy. Mm -hmm. And spirit works with uh, seeing entities like what you like, like who you're dealing with with catastrophe out there. Okay. Is there a way to... So we know that right now this thing seems to... It, it, it's its choice of energy it seems to want it that it's you know consuming seem to be negative is there a way for for my character to boost uh our doctor's positive to sort of like give her you know like a bit of like almost like you know a like i got you like i got you girl like you know yeah. Like you don't like that. Any of that like doubt in the back of your head is like, nah, gone. Like you got this shit. Yeah, you could totally do that. Okay. So that's kind of what I would like to do. So uh, the doctor is, I guess, somewhat protected by, okay. the, you know, from the spear or whatever. So. Okay. Um, yes. Am I able to absorb some of that energy to get a better sense 
of what's going on through my spirit. Like I, I envision like healing being like taking on the pain onto myself and healing the individual. So yeah. Um, in a sense, absorbing that negative energy to get a better sense of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could totally do that. And I was looking at the instruments and things that you use. And some of the things that you use are body work, which is touch, like, like massage um, and or, or like laying on hands. Uh, there's meditation, um, yoga. I mean, you could you could like you could assume a yoga position, you know, a, 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 an asana and you know, close your eyes and breathe and sense things. You could reach out and touch people. You could, um, you could talk to people. Um, I mean, I, I know that the energy is flowing into the ground and then upwards. Could I put my hand on the ground to mm -hmm. sense the energy? Yep. You can absolutely do that. Okay. And, uh, Stasha, what are you, what are you doing to help Heather out? So what I am doing is I have, so my cat-like features had been sort of, I, there, there wasn't a distinct type of cat. Now my hair has completely disappeared and I have sort of this lioness type of look well. and I have gone and I put my hands on your shoulder, like both of them. And I just quietly tell you sister i have you cool okay and go back to mike real quick as you are you're doing you're getting a reading yeah um what since i don't have spirit skill do i need to or do i need to roll uh you have prime correct uh, let's see i believe so yeah uh two spheres Okay, you can, I, I, again, this is just one of those things where it's so, what's going on is so obvious that I'm not going to even have your role here. Uh, yeah, you, you are sensing that, that current of kind of anxious, uh, anxious, insecure energy being drawn into the ground and then up in a column in the center of the, uh, in the center of the tent area up to this, that, again, that vortex. And you can get a sense that that a vortex is alive in some way. And also, you you would get a uh, you'd get a reading on the people. Um, the people in the ground are sort of uh, have this sort of a uh, like a crackling field, like a like a crackling dampening field around them. The three people, that road warrior guy, the uh, the the other woman, and the uh, the kind of the 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 the, the slimy, androgynous dude ish, um, are all radiating very very strong energy of their own you can also sense two other people you can you can sense their energy signatures more than you can actually see them um, off to the uh, off, one off to one side one off to another side uh, one of them is uh, one of them is is kind of crouching by uh, uh, crouching by a person who seems to be uh, agitated but not asleep and is whispering to them that person seems to be again you're getting more sense of their energy than their physicality uh, seems to be very kind of lean and crackling uh, and at the other side there's another energy signature very very definitely feminine uh, that is playing a guitar and you can't hear the words, but seems to be singing to three people who are um, kind of sprawled out around her. Uh, and the guitar, the sound of the guitar really shouldn't carry over the, um, the pounding music that you hear from outside. But again, as you step further into this, that pounding recedes and you begin to hear the, uh, the tones of the guitar more than you hear the uh, the loud amplified music outside. Does anyone have music as their 
uh, or within it? Yeah, 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 I do. Um, okay. Because I, I was gonna say, looking into those. Uh, I have dance, it seems. So I also have dance. Yeah. I have music as a focus, and I was going to say, like, can my character, like, try and use their magic to, like, run a program to sort of capture the sounds in the room, the music, and then play that back, drowning out the music, but trying to focus on uh, just the random bits that come in, the, the, the words that they can hear that aren't, like, part of the music. Mm -hmm. So, like, so, like, sampling it, and then uh, sampling it, and then, re and, and then um, remixing it? More or less, yeah. Yeah, you could totally do that. Okay, and Heather, what you see when you have reached down and look up, uh, what you what you see is is like a it's like a, a a beating heart with tentacles reaching up and out, and you could you 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 imagine that's probably where those streamers are outside, but it, it's so it's like a again like a a large uh, ephemeral, like giant ghost heart, um, beating in time with the music that that woman over there is playing. And, and the tentacles reaching up and out through the roof of the temple. And so as I said, the, the, the energy is coursing through the ground and up into a column, which is invisible to normal eyes, but you can see it now, reaching up into the center of that heart and feeding it in the pulses. And that heart is blue, like, like an almost, a, like a neon cobalt ghost blue. And you get a sense with that, uh, you get a sense with, with every pulse of a yearning uh, and uh, a melancholy. And you, Sasha, because you're, uh, because you're in touch with her, you get that sense as well. Uh, Michael, because you're, an, because you're an ecstatic and emotions and passions are your, basically part of your, your, whole, your magic in, itself, you begin to feel that sense of melancholy drawing, seeping up from your feet up into your back, your skull, your chest, you know, it all begins to feel very heavy. And the more that all of you, the more that all of you key into that energy, the more that energy keys into you and begins to begins to kind of draw you down, pull you down, not physically, but it feels you emotionally begin to feel very, very heavy. Um, so my, my character will once again begin to weep. Uh, can we have, or I guess maybe through Heather, um, or maybe even Michael's character, are we able to sense what is causing this melancholy, this this deep, profound sadness. Well, as far as you can tell, the sadness is that the sadness is intrinsic to that, and it's very clear to you now. Entity up there. So that entity literally is melancholy. It is. It is. Your. It is melancholy. It is yearning. It is. It's. It's not sadness in a depressed way. It's like nostalgia. You know the the uh, the pain of the past. And Heather, you feel this especially profoundly because a you're a healer. You have spirit. You have energy. You you have spirit. You have prime, and you have more than anyone else keyed into exactly what is the literal heart of this temple. Is yearning and sadness and melancholy, and you you can catch that 
what's feeding, it's feeding on the sadness and the melancholy of the people who are sleeping or dazed or having nightmares, or in the case of the, uh, the people cluster around the woman with the guitar, um, not quite sleeping, but enraptured. Can I get a sense from the energy if I'm able to reverse the direction mm -hmm. on which it flows? You could try. That's a very good idea. <laughs> so just to see what happens. That, let's see. So, let's see, this would be, this would be, I guess it would be spirit. Yeah, well, you're trying, you're trying to do, uh, you're trying to use prime. Okay. Um, what are you doing to, to reverse that? Are you going to meditate? Uh, are you going to talk to it or try and try and address the, the, the entity? It's um, kind of like still like looking up and my hand on the ground going, yeah, going into a clear meditative state mm -hmm. um, and kind of using imagery to reverse direction of the, um, of, of how it's flowing. Like okay. It from the heart. Okay. Tell you what, one of the things that you have, because you have that, that extra quintessence from, um, from catastrophe, you can use a point of quintessence. What is your, let's see, your healer, what's your avatar rating? Uh, healer, your avatar is two. So you can use two points of quintessence to lower the difficulty of, of this. Again, this is, um, this is what would be called coincidental magic because the, a normal person seeing you do this wouldn't realize what you're doing. Uh, so this would be, let's see, prime two. So uh, roll your, your three dice for Arate. Uh, and anything higher than a three uh, is a success. Four or higher is a success. Uh, six, six, and five. Okay. So you get three successes and you start to feel the energy catch in that column and start to draw in toward you instead. And that's when the, uh, the, 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 the big blue pulsating spirit heart turns a darker blue suddenly. Um, anyone with spirit sight can see this. Uh, and you get a strong surge of pain, not physical pain, but an emotional, uh, uh, but it, it, it a, a, a yearning, a yearning so deep that uh, suddenly, uh, you, let me rephrase that. You are suddenly struck by a yearning so deep that it feels like there's nothing in your life you've ever done right. It's that kind of, you know, that kind of feeling when you know you've screwed up really, really badly. And you're sitting there at like three or four o'clock in the morning and you're remembering everything that you've ever done wrong. It's suddenly like a surge of that into your heart. And Sasha, you can feel that through your hands as well. Okay. Um, is there a way that... I can help Heather in moving this energy because at least my mind with my, my, my witchcraft that these emotions, there's nothing inherently wrong with them. And that we all have times and moments when we have these deep sorrows, if even grief, if we want to call it that, mm -hmm. and that it is more about having, experiencing it and moving through than wallowing and living in that. Cool. So, yeah. 
Yes, you can help with that. And I will tell you how in just a second here. Mike, you had wanted to to sample the music. Um, basically, make it make an Arate roll. Anything higher than a three works. Uh, that's uh, the, the, the three dice. Three D10s. Hmm? Three uh, D10s. Yeah, three D10s. Okay. Okay, um, I have an eight, a four, and a ten. Okay, cool. Uh, Reroll your ten. Okay. A five. Okay, cool. So you get a sample, and you start to uh, and you start to um, remix it. And what are you going to do with the remix? Just try and analyze it for abnormalities or just things that don't quite fit, something out of place, something. Okay. Cool. So what you're getting is you're running the analysis is that this is definitely a para. Uh, this is per, this person is hacking reality you know, to, to your to your perception. What this person is doing is using sound waves to evoke an emotional state. Uh, that is drawing these people into giving into, into feeding their energy into the ground. Uh, it's essentially it's playing. She's playing a sad song and not making it better. Can I remix that the music that is being played and, and, and using my own reality hacking magic to attempt to change the music so that not to invoke an opposite emotion, but rather to give people the kind of free will to enjoy the music or not enjoy it and leave. Yes, that will take a second. So I'm going to go over to Michael, but yes, you can absolutely do that. Michael, what are you doing? I was actually going to ask if I could uh, somehow help using my practice of invigoration and my own um, music, like instrumentation to um, make that um, an even more powerful um, vibe, so to speak. Okay. So are you going to try and help, uh, try and help Mike? Which, which music are you trying to enhance? And how are you trying to enhance it? Um, I'm going to be trying to enhance my You, you froze up there for a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to enhance uh, Mike's music um, okay. by adding another, uh, either another layer or my own um, improvisation in on top of that. Okay. Uh, do you have an instrument or you like be using like, like you could, you could probably like, like stomp out a beat or you could sing or you could... You could use your body as percussion. I don't think you're carrying an instrument, but I'm not sure. I haven't looked at your character sheet for a while. No, it's just what I was looking at. I'm not carrying an instrument, um, but let's see what I am carrying. Um, no. if, um, if, you, if you don't have an instrument, let me know. I think my character like kind of has um, like a, a very beat up like Stratocaster like he just carries it around it doesn't look like it's actually used for playing music more like <laughs> submissively beating the shit out of stuff but <laughs> it should be, still be functional um, maybe with your, your abilities you can kind of just kind of jam out I was actually yeah yeah either that or I was going to see if somehow I could uh, get that woman with the guitar to let me you know play a song okay are you gonna like talk to her or go up to her or you know what yeah yeah i'll go up to her and uh try to convince her to let me have the guitar okay so now that now that you're walking toward her what you what you can see is she's uh she she's uh Younger one, younger woman, probably you know, early early mid twenties. Very long, thick, uh, very long, thick brown hair. Uh, big, big brown eyes. Not like you know that kind of big, but uh, uh, 
you know, very um, compelling gaze, uh, kind of dressed in a hippie bard sort of uh, sort of look. And, and she kind of, she looks at you as, you as you come up, and she catches your eyes, and she's like, "Hi, do you play?" I do actually. Oh, would you? Would you like? And she stops. She stops playing. She looks at the others, and she, she takes off the guitar strap and, and hands it toward you. And it's not a flirtation, but it's an invitation, and it's a welcome. Show me what you can do. And let's see. wonderful. Hey, um, mm-hmm, good. So I, uh, as he takes the guitar he also takes off the uh muddy green kind of coats and underneath his uh torso and all the tattoos on it are now a bright gold color cool um his his, his chains are um, now really shining and like I am right here look at me cool and his posture has just almost seemingly just roars confidence as he takes the guitar and walks up on the stage she she's oh, there, there's not an actual stage or but uh, you could you could stand. You I I wouldn't recommend standing in the center of the room because that's where the energy where mm-hmm. the energy is going up. But you could like kind of step back um, so that you're the center or a center of attention over here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. When you are doing that, and Mike, when you're when you're analyzing the sample, uh, Heather, Sasha, while you're reaching in and kind of looking at the the blue heart and pulling the energy toward it. The big road warrior looking dude um, kind of looks down to the other woman and and uh, she looks up at uh, she looks up at him and they both start walking toward you. And the road warrior looking dude does not look happy. And he comes up um, he comes up to you, Mike. He's like Hi. You're all welcome here, of course. I, I, I'm glad to see you here at the Temple of Tranquility. Thank you. If you, uh, if you want to relax, you're, you're free to do that. But I'm afraid I really have to invite you to take your electronic recording devices elsewhere. I'm sure you can understand why. Uh, actually, no, that would be like separating a part of my soul. Well, then I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I invite you. And, and that's the other, the other one that kind of like elbows him. He said, I'm, I am inviting you to seek another place of solace other than our camp. What he means, what, what train wreck means to say, says the other woman smiling at you very, very charmingly. Almost, almost a preternatural charm. What train wreck means? What train wreck means to say is, you are welcome. All of you are welcome here at the Temple of Tranquility. But we really have to enforce the boundaries of, of this. This is sacred space. We can't have people intruding on the. Uh, we can't have people intruding on the privacy of our artists she says gesturing over to the other to to um, to michael and to the other woman there uh or of our guests and she gestures to the people around here she says i can absolutely understand i deeply sympathize if your electronics are important to you but they really they're not welcome here in this space i, I have to ask you to please take them elsewhere or find another place to relax thank you so what's the matter? You guys don't like someone fiddling with this knob on the stereo? <laughs> and the big guy says, actually, no. <laughs> Guess don't mess with the DJs. 
radio. Yeah, he he crosses he crosses his arms. Says, "We're asking you nicely to leave. Do we need to call the danger? Uh, not the danger rangers. Do we need to call the holy fools?" Possibly. I mean, I'm not going to be a bother, but I will leave peacefully. But thank you. Please do. And what are the rest of you doing during this exchange? Okay. So I'm still helping Heather. Mm -hmm. So Unfortunately, my actions are going to be based on what Heather is doing. So okay. that seems to be most of where my energy is going right now. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to say that uh, I had gotten kind of, you know, as I was absorbing the energy and, and feeling the melancholy almost taken away with it. Um, but got distracted from that, listening to the argument between um, the bouncer and Mike. Um, I, <laughs> so voice and apparently I have very high manipulation <laughs> <laughs> on my character sheet. Um, I kind of, I stand up and I, I slowly walk over to the bouncer and I'm wondering if there's some way that I could speak with him to manipulate him into getting Mike to stay. Yeah, you could, um, you could make me, you, you could make nice and, you know, convince him that, no, this is my friend. He's well, you know, let, let him stay. Mike, put your thing there. You put your thing there away. That's what's bothering him. You could try getting into an insult contest with him and see if, uh, with the big dude and see if that might, uh, if that might impress him. Uh, you could, since manipulate, since your manipulation is high, you could probably appeal to the, uh, to the shorter woman who is standing next to him and see if she can call the bouncer off. Hmm. But she, what all what is really really obvious to all of you is that she's the center of attention as far as the other folks here are concerned she's definitely the one calling the shots except maybe for that thing up in the ceiling so i'll appeal to her <laughs> oh kitty mm -hmm. oh kitty <laughs> okay cool what uh, what do you do um I, oh my God, <laughs> my brain isn't working. Okay, it's <laughs> all right. Um, so I'm gonna, real quick, I'm gonna check in. Anthony, how are we doing for time? Okay. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> what you, Heather sense would probably work best with her uh, would be using the kind of turning the what what's called um, nonviolent communication or um, compassionate communication that both of them have been using her more than him uh, that whole I invite you I I sense you know I I I hear you I see where you're coming from I invite you to perhaps take this as a different as an opportunity to do something more constructive you can sense that using that kind of terminology with her will probably get her to do what you want especially if you throw a little bit of mind behind that all righty um so how would i do i roll for that or? yeah in this case that would be your uh, manipulation plus either empathy or etiquette. Let me check your, check the character sheet here real quick. That's healer. Let's see, Manipul oh, your, manip your manipulation is persuasive. Four, empathy, three. Um, yeah, I'll be your manipulation plus empathy. That would be seven dice and reroll any tens. Uh, 
you're going to have to be convincing her to do something that she's probably not really inclined to do. So that would be about a difficulty seven. Okay. Um, is it possible for me to use give her some of my quintessence because I have a whole bunch of it? Or um, help in yes. some way. Okay. You have you have prime two, correct? Yes. Okay. So you can use prime two, and I'm not going to make your roll for this. You can just you're you're already doing it. You can give her two points to quintessence of quintessence to lower that difficulty to five. Okay. <clears throat> From a game mastering standpoint, what I'm doing here is bending the rules because we're not going to like dig through this monstrosity here to figure out exactly how this role would work. Um, one of the big things about running games, and you've probably already got this before, uh, you know, from from uh, from other sessions, is games are like improvisational theater. Rather than saying no, uh, unless no is something that you absolutely do not want the players to do, um, it's yes and or yes but. Um, you want to facilitate the thing that's going to make the game fun and cool for everybody. So in this particular case, I'm bending the rules um, because what, 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 Heather, what, what Sasha and Heather are doing is really cool and fits the story. So yes, you can do it. Um, uh, Heather, how, Sasha has lowered your difficulty to, um, to five and just uh, roll your uh, uh, roll those seven dice and anything from five higher is a success. Yeah, are you good? Um, so I have five that are five or higher. Okay, cool. You have a seven, seven, five, seven, and nine. Nice. And then two ones. <laughs> cool. Oh, you have two ones. Okay, the, the ones take one success away. So you've still got three successes. Cool. Um, so you, basically, you new age speak her um, and she listens and she goes, she, she kind of turns, turns to the big guy and she's like, train wreck, maybe I invite you to, I invite you to allow him to stay under the condition. And she says, turning to you, Mike, I do invite you under the condition of your of, of, of you remaining here that you please put your recording devices away to protect and safeguard the safety, to protect and safeguard the privacy of the people here. Are we all agreed? That sounds like a good idea to me. I accept this invitation. Thank you. And may I, are, are, you, are, you, are you open to hugs? May I might I hug you? I'm pro hug. And she reaches over and she gives you a hug. It's a really good hug. Um, she's not doing anything, you know, particular with it. It's just like she just feels like a really nice person giving you a really nice hug. And she she comes to you, um, Heather. She goes, "Thank you for suggesting that." My, are, are you are are you know are you open to hugs? I am. And could I? from hugging her, get any more information since I'm laying on hands, technically. Yep, you sure could. Okay. Um, so, hmm? yep, so, uh, so you, you hug her. Um, again, it's one of those things where, especially because we're kind of running low on time and I want to, uh, I want to give this a, you know, give, give this a good, um, you know, lead us to a good conclusion here. Yes, what you sense from her is, She's a person of really good intention, but very deep sorrow. And that she is, she's kind of compensating for that sorrow and trying to win past that sorrow by trying to do good for people. And what you can sort of sense from the entity up there is that it's using her. And by extension, using the rest of them. Um, what you get from hugging her is that this is this is a person who really means well um, and fears she's often fears as we were talking about a, a little while ago fears that she doesn't do well but she's trying. So I have an idea and I hmm. don't so I don't know how this could possibly work. So because witches or at least my character the witch, uh, my focus is circles and dance. I also have high life. 
I was wondering uh, with Hever if we could possibly invoke a just going with this new age thing a healing circle dance around the heart with mm-hmm. Mike with both mics uh helping the artists and, and and amplifying that specifically him using his abilities to amplify that type of healing life circle that we are accepting the sorrow but we are also allowing it to sort of pass and we're no longer holding it, like holding that trauma and allowing it to just be. And that maybe by doing that, that that will somehow help this entity of melancholy to no longer hunger as much as it is to understand that it's okay to be what it is Mm -hmm. and that it's to have more flexibility since at least in my head this idea of this like why it's constantly hungering and needing is that it's stuck in this that it's not able to be as flowy as catastrophe and be, be able to change and morph and be like yes I'm sad and maybe my sadness will be super deep but then maybe it's not, and that's okay. So that's sort of where I'm going with this. <laughs> Theoretically, yeah, that actually sounds like a really good idea. Okay. Uh, do you tell the others what you have in mind, or how do you tell the others? So I, I will turn to Heather, and I go, Heather's my sister. I, I have this wonderful idea, and I hope I can bring this to you uh, our new dear friends. May I call you a dear friend? And I look to these these two. The, these two being the the, the bouncer yeah. dude and the and the priestess. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And may I? And in my culture, I look to my friends that I may call you if you allow, sister and brother. I would like to show my appreciation in a in a dance where we all join hands and we are able to feel each other and we are able to create a bond and support one another and i would like to invite everyone into this may i do so the the, um, the the priestess kind of looks looks at you and look looks at all of you and you know I'm not even going to have your role on this because um, that was re- that was beautifully role played. Um, she looks at you and f- tears start running down her face, and she's like, "Thank you." I I, I think and she she looks up briefly at the other guy and she's I think and she takes his hand. She says. I think that that would be wonderful. And, and she reaches for your hand. Sounds and you good. don't sense any covert agenda in this. Okay, so I'm gonna take her hand. I'm then gonna take Heather's hand. I'm going to kind of have, I guess, put like my life uh, energy makes mm-hmm. my prime because those are like my two whatevers. Mm-hmm. So she understands that I'm like, wanna send this energy through it. So, and I kind of look to, you know, Michael and Michael mm. and like, may, may you, you know, bring the gift if you, if you wish of music and to, if it is all right to, what's another word for amplification? Um, enhance. Enhance, enhance, imbue your spirit. Uh, to it as you are uh, the way that you would so that all can feel this this beautiful uh, dance that we are going to perform and I would like to kind of call everyone around us to join us 
if they wish. My character motions to my up to the same area uh, to like play together. Okay, my and joins you. And the, uh, the 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 woman who handed you the guitar um, picks up and she's she turns out she's got a flute next to her and she picks up the flute and she she kind of looks at you and says, "Well, lead on." All right. Um, question. Um, one of my practices is invigorate. Okay. And how would I do that? Uh, is, is invigoration. Invigoration is mostly about getting your uh, kind of getting uh, to like workout, basically, uh, you uh -huh. know, ex doing a lot of exercise and so forth. Dancing would count, though. Um, you could do the, uh, you know, you, you could do the the dancing along with uh, dancing along with the, the music as as you're uh, as you're playing. Uh, you could also let me check because it seems to me that one of your practices is also art, or one of your instruments is also art. Um, I, it's like the arts, I think. Yeah, gutter magic, inv uh, invigoration, yoga, dance, uh, meditation, music. Uh, social domination. Um, what you can do is you can raise your voice, and as you as you had done a little while ago, bring basically bring bring yourself in as the center of attention um, with kind of some some flourishes and a strong voice, and play some really powerful notes and draw people in with that, and and uh, and draw raise energy with that. You could do that. So, all right. I, I look at the the flautist, I guess, mm -hmm. and I look at Mike's character and I just kind of like whisper to them real quick. Uh, uh, key, of, key of C, keep the harmonies uh, going and follow me for tempo changes. And then I put the guitar on and take a deep breath and just start with one rather mellow but seemingly carrying and just let it ring out cool again i won't even have you i won't even have your roll for that that works so and you just you feel all of you feel the reverberations uh, of that of that one note resonate again through you and you see those of you who are still looking if anybody's still looking at that column of energy it, it wavers a little bit and um who's standing in the doorway or standing or kneeling because i think heather you were kneeling um as as he's playing those of you who are in the doorway sense um sense the spirit of catastrophe suddenly standing behind you and moving in the rhythm as uh, as Mike as Michael begins to play and I guess Mike what are you doing I am kind of just uh, backing him on a uh, bass okay cool and uh, Heather what are you doing um well we are now hand in hand um what i want to do is kind of get into that meditative state again where mm -hmm. i start to use all of the positive energy that i can muster and spread that from sasha to the woman to whoever's holding her hand and it's almost as if it's like a glowing golden light oh. that transfers from me and then to the next to the next and until we're like all this glowing warm light cool okay then you don't have to speak you can do it in the dance you don't have to hide and as michael raises his voice and the rest of you join in and the flautist 
throws in uh, throws throws in some enhance some some notes and Mike, as you begin to sample and add a uh, add a bass sample behind it, the energy there starts to uh, starts to waver and coruscate in time with the music and the priestess and the big road warrior dude and the other people who you had seen off to the side the kind of like greasy snaky dude kind of starts just fading out you know pull, pulling a, a a graceful dismount out one of out behind one of the other uh, tents as the music rises and the people begin to dance the people who were sleeping kind of rise up and they're like oh oh that's cool and they also start to dance and catastrophe herself swirls in and begins um again she's dressed again and back in belly dancer gear and this time she's not shifting between um between garb this time she's kind of dressed like a tribal belly dancer with scarves and she begins waving the scarves around Almost like the uh, almost like the, the the banners and the tentacles have been had been uh, uh, sweeping out at the top, except that she's drawing them in and then dispersing them. And all of you can sense the energy rising, dissipating. the the uh, the, the blue heart fades to green and begins to pulse in time with the music. And you all sense. A, you all sense a profound wave of relief and joy and release as all those things which have been held and channeled and and repressed begin to flow out in a in a positive and healing way not denying the grief not denying the pain but embracing that those are only passing sensations in life and that the life itself, which you can feel pulsing up now through the rugs, into your feet, into your spines, up the chakras, into your hands, into the instruments. It's the life itself that's the most important part. And here and now you all dance with life. And leave things there, thank you. Congratulations. You have healed the uh, you've healed the you, you've you've healed the pain and you've you've channeled the energy into something yeah you know, into something positive and 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 glorious. So yeah, good job, y'all. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Uh, I agree. Cool. So yeah, that's. That's mage, and obviously that's a uh, that's that's a that's a, a very brief and very positive view of mage. One of the things about mage as as its I guess a primary designer and primary author is like I said earlier, I always wanted to make it um, um, make it empowering, uh, positive whenever possible, and though there's plenty of potential in mage for violence, I've always as a designer looked at encouraging people to do different do do things differently than that so cool thank you you all did a great job with that all of you and just all of you thank you for thank you for taking thank you for taking the characters and running with them thank you for taking your your um, your own energy and your own inspiration your own creativity because that's fucking awesome thank you thank you thank you for thank having you. a yeah. Thank you for having an actual game that sort of allows that and just really, yeah, it's, yeah. it's super collaborative and also just the amount of creativity to really get into those emotions mm -hmm. and it not, I don't want to say cheesy, but it's like it's encouraged and supported and that's like that's the, where we want to go we want to have those moments where we're like yeah we're gonna have like a, a dance circle and this is how this is gonna solve the day and we're all like this is the coolest thing yeah. ever i really love that you did that i, I really I, I really i love what you, i love what you all did with this i i love sasha that that you came up with that i love heather that you were like looking at how to you know how how to heal the uh, how to heal the pain rather than to to go oh, oh you know bad spirit uh mike i love how you were incorporating the uh, 
how you're incorporating it, the, the tech into it and, and getting an analysis of what, what the problem was uh, and finding a way to, again, to, to, to remix it. And Michael, I love that you, you kind of stepped up and occupied that and said, okay, I am now center stage. I'm going to be the focus for this great ritual uh, because that, that's, yeah, that, that's fucking awesome. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. And thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Do you have any uh, any other questions or anything that you wanted to go over or talk about while we're still here? I guess my only question, much like we asked John, I mean, you know, getting to have and getting to play with DMs like you is a blessing. And if there's other ways to get to play with you guys, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, I can I can post my social media on. Uh, I generally, more often than not, I, I, I tend to play in the games rather than run because I write the damn things. <laughs> but, uh, Forever DM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, uh, I'll, I'll you know, post my social media. Any of you who want to, you know, any of you who want to stay in contact with or follow me, you know, please do. Just let me let me know who you are because you know by by Twitter and so forth we go by a million different names. Um, but yeah, uh, there are there are other you know there there are other groups who emphasize more role playing than the I now hit the orc for fourteen points of damage playing. Um, and again, it really it, it depends on you know it depends on who you're gaming with. Um, but but thank you because yeah I I'm trying to think of how to yeah what you what what y'all are doing. Uh, as, especially, you know, well, yeah, well, especially what, what you all are doing. This is the kind of role playing I really enjoy. So thank you. I, I definitely prefer this over, you know, pile up the or, pile up the orc corpses. Oh. Uh, it, I guess. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was saying, yeah, it, it just reminded me like, like kind of going back with something John says a lot. It's a lot better than just rushing in and uh, killing everybody who looks different than us and rifling their pockets for loose change. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the best way to find people, I'm, I'm digging through my social media now so I can put it into chat. Um, the best way to find people who are, who are more oriented toward uh, this, this sort of gaming is to get involved in um, usually online communities that are focused more on uh, storytelling, role-playing, uh, rather than strategic role-playing. Um, I also highly recommend, though I'm not obviously a designer for it, I highly recommend the uh, Powered by the Apocalypse system games. Uh, Monster Hearts, uh, in particular, is, is a favorite of mine, because those are very role-playing and relationship-oriented, um, rather than, you know, rather than Carnage uh, and, and Warfare-oriented. And so the communities around those are more, uh, you know, more focused on character interaction than on hit points and body counts. And let's see, I'm just trying to. 